Welcome back guys to another Rift Guides Wild Rift video. This time we are making quite a little bit of a different format. There's going to be no cuts and just me talking to you. With obviously the script. Or rather the patch notes. So let's start with the skins. This time we are going to receive Malphite and Zombie Slayer Pantheon. In case you're not familiar with those two skins, they look quite nice so get the wallets ready already. Next to that, there'll also be accessoires, or accessories, depending on where you're from. With the ones you're seeing here, you see number one, nice little flowers, and number two, a season five symbol. The season five symbol hints towards the end of the season, so expect the end of the season rather soon, even though we have no confirmation on when it's actually going to happen. After this, we go over to the next event, and here we have Join the Fluff in an, an Ionian event. Join the Poros on another Fluff-tastic adventure, and this time in Ionia. This event begins at the 10th of March. And now let's move over to the actual hard of this patch, the champion changes. This slippery assassin has had too easy of a time killing his foes, so we're cutting back on some of his base damage. As a consequence, his third ability space damage goes down and the base damage of his ultimate goes also down. Quite interesting, because this champion is still going to one hit you with his second ability. But I figure just a normal change, but this doesn't really do anything as to why you picked Fizz, because Fizz wasn't really competitively viable, but in solo queue he's an assassin and he'll still be okay. The next nerf is going to hit Jax, and Jax has been quite the competitive pick nowadays. Everybody wants to play Jax, everybody wants to ban Jax, and nobody wants to see this champion or face this champion. So we see another nerf to his passive ability. This time they're cutting down quite a lot on his passive attack speed. Going down 0.5 per stack, up to 2% on maximum level per stack. That's a lot of attack speed lost. However, I don't think this is going to remove him, it's just going to make him significantly weaker. The next champion on this list is Lulu. With Lulu, it's always quite the interesting story. Like, you see the numbers here, like a second ability's cooldown goes up by one second, and the shield value goes up in the early game and down in the late game. But the thing is, this isn't why you pick the Lulu. The Lulu is mainly picked as a damage enhancer. She wants to buff her allies and make them beat down the enemy. It's like a, an item in the form of a champion. That is why this champion is annoying and overbearing. So maybe in the next upcoming patches, look at her damage values, especially from picks, and work on those, or the attack speed bonus, but not the cooldown and not the shield value. And now we have the real winner of this patch, and this is Yumi. Yumi is absolutely crazy with those patch changes. For one, she gets base mana regeneration, Second, her passive cooldown goes down by quite a lot in the early game, 2 seconds is not too little. Then her first ability is buffed in terms of mana cost, damage, base damage and empower damage, and <laughs> this is not the end by the way. The second ability, so the attached one, gets a massive buff for AP champions, and then her fourth ability, the ultimate, is also getting a damage buff. So if you take this champion, who has just been annoying before, and give him even more stats and let the allies gain more stats, this is going to be really problematic. Especially if you take a look at the botlane meta in a competitive environment where you see a lot of mages. So imagine a Zix with this champion that has been allowed to scale that throws in the Mega, Imper the Mega Inferno Bomb and just blasts you into next season. What are you going to do? You're just going to die. With those changes, I can see this champion becoming a permaban, at least in a competitive environment because this looks scary. The next change is coming to items. And here we have the Mauve Mamotheus. The issue with this item is, if you read it closely, you'll see it has, an, it has a unique passive, like Xerox Gage. And they share the same passive. And Xerox Gage as an item on the champions that are allowed to buy it is too strong to build this item. It just doesn't help them as much as Sterex help them, helps them. Therefore, more is just not an option for those champions. And on other champions, it's just not doing what it's supposed to be. It's just not enough. But at least something, the gold cost goes down. But hey, 
maybe next patch. Another change that looks quite weird is a change to Electrocute. They're buffing the base damage and they're removing or reducing the cooldown. With the cooldown reduced, it looks more appealing, but the issue is 20 seconds in a mobile game is still 20 seconds. That's a lot of time. But overall, it makes the rune a little bit more appealing, but that's it after all. The next rune change for Triumph is quite the big change though, especially for the tankier targets. Whenever you play like a bruiser or tankier champion, this rune has been quite the nice rune for you. Because of your high health pull, you'd regain so much health from a kill or an assist. With them buffing this rune to grant you even more damage from 3 to 5% to targets below 35%, it becomes quite the nice rune to have. Because what are the alternatives? They're just not as good. So a clear plus for this rune. The next rune who's also, or what is also really receiving a buff, is Hunter Genius. The starting ability haste goes up from 2.5 to 3 and the ability haste per stack goes up as well. So we have up to 18 max ability haste just from this rune. Given what happens down the road in the patch notes, but from what I've seen, this is quite a nice change. But overall, this is a nice change, but the main issues for the people who want this rune is going to be the people that want mana flow. Like Orianna, Zix, these champions kind of want mana flow, but they could manage, if they play really well, to go for this rune, to give them even more ability haste. The next rune is not going to change anything, because this is just not good enough. Face Rush in this game feels fundamentally flawed, because it's too fast and it grants too little for the cost you're paying, because you're losing a major rune and it's just not good enough. So even though the cooldown goes down from 15 to 12, I don't think it's going to change anything. The next change though is the change I've talked about, especially with Hunter Genius being buffed and Sweet Tooth being nerfed. So in my opinion, Honey Fruit shouldn't exist and this rune shouldn't exist as well. You should get punished for playing bad and therefore lose. But this rune and the Honey Fruit allow you to play bad and therefore gain advantages by having this rune over other runes. So seeing it nerfed is something that makes me happy. Losing 5% of the bonus healing and 5 gold is not that much, but it's at least a start. The next change comes to bone plating. The cooldown goes down from 45 to 35 seconds. The idea is nice behind this, but the problem is it's still too long. It's 35 seconds. That is way too long for a rune's cooldown. You just can't use this reliably. The next buff comes to conditioning. Conditioning has been a rune that hasn't been used because it takes too long to come online. To combat this, Riot thought it's a nice idea to reduce the start timer from 5 to 3 minutes and therefore the stats a bit to give you more earlier. The issue is this isn't useful for AD carries, but it's useful to, for tanks. So champions such as Darius, or maybe even Garen, really will like to run this rune, because it just makes them even stronger. But overall, this rune will still have some kind of issues, because for example on the PC variant, you gain a percentage bonus to your base stats as well. So to make this rune really viable, I think they need to do the same for Wild Rift. And our pri prayers have finally been heard. Resolve Hunter Titan is getting a nerf. The tenacity gain per unique champion takedown goes down from 3 it goes down from 4 to 3%. So at max stacks, it's 20 to 15%. The issue is, this rune will still be too unbelievably powerful. The amount of health, full stacked 120, plus the tenacity make it way too attractive compared to the other alternatives. Because why would I need some resistances that barely give me anything if I don't have the health pool to back this up? And just getting so much health, plus the tenacity on top, without committing anything for it is just too insane. But it's at least a right step into the right direction. And next up comes the second wind rune. Second wind really hasn't been the rune you wanted. It just didn't do enough. Laning phases in the game are way too short for this rune to really be powerful enough. So to combat this, Riot thought in this case it's a good idea to cut down the time from 10 to 5 seconds to get the full healing after receiving champion damage. This looks like a very high buff, so we'll need to see how it actually influences the game, because I might see some interesting changes with this. However, yet again, keep in mind in which tree it's in and what other alternatives you have before you make your judgement. But at least 
it becomes a more bad, a better alternative right now. And with all this out of the way, we move over to the free to play champion rotation. From the 3rd March to the 9th March, we have Camille, Jax, Noonan, Willem, Ramis, Sana, Fresh, Tristana, Vyga, Zaya, and Zed. And from the 10th of March to the 16th of March, we have Evelyn, Fiora, Gragas, Katarina, Morgana, Nami, Oriana, Trindemir, Varys, and Vayne. And that's it. Thank you for listening, and thank you for stopping by, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and see you soon for more content.